Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in the last video, we had seen that different types of filter approximations which are quite commonly used in the filter design. So in this video, we will see the Butterworth filter approximation in a detail. And we will also see how to design the higher order low pass as well as the high pass filter using this Butterworth filter approximation. So now in the last video, we had seen that this Butterworth filter has a very flat pass band and the roll off of this filter is at the rate of 20 and dB per decade. So suppose if you are designing the fourth order filter, then the roll off of that filter will be at the rate of 80 dB per decade. Or if you are designing the eighth order filter, then that filter will be having a roll off at the rate of 160 dB per decade. So first of all, let us see how to design the second order Butterworth low pass filter. And based on that, we will see how to design the higher order Butterworth filters. So now if you see the transfer function of any second order low pass filter, then it can be given by this expression where here this K represents the gain of that particular filter and this omega N represents the cutoff frequency of that particular filter. And if we write this expression in terms of the quality factor Q, then it can be written in this way. So first of all, let us understand how to get this transfer function for the second order low pass filter. And then after we will see the criteria for the Butterworth filter design. So in the earlier videos of RC low pass filter, we had seen that just by cascading the two first order low pass filters, we can get the second order low pass filter. So first of all, now let us derive the transfer function for the second order filter. So for the first order filter, we know that the output by input can be given as Xc divided by Xc plus R. Now here Xc is nothing but 1 divided by J into omega C. And suppose if we represent this J omega in S plane, that is J omega is equal to S, then we can write this Xc as 1 divided by Sc. So we can write this expression as 1 divided by Sc divided by 1 over Sc plus R. Or simply we can write it as a 1 divided by 1 plus Rcs. So now if we have a two such filters which are cascaded, then we can write the V out by V in as 1 divided by 1 plus R1 C1 into S into 1 divided by 1 plus R2 C2 into S. And if we rearrange this expression, then we can write it as a 1 divided by R1 C1 into R2 C2 divided by S square plus R1 C1 plus R2 C2 divided by R1 R2 into C1 C2 into S plus 1 divided by R1 R2 into C1 into C2. So now if you compare this expression with the generalized expression of second order filter, then indeed you can see that the transfer function of the second order filter is in this form, where here this omega naught is equal to 1 divided by under root R1 R2 into C1 into C2. So in this way you can see the transfer function of any second order low pass filter will be of this form. So now whenever we are cascading the two first order low pass filter to design the second order filter, then the cutoff frequency of the second order filter will not be same as the first order filter. Let us say in this design R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R and C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C, then the cutoff frequency Fc will be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi into Rc. So now for this filter, the cutoff frequency of the second order filter should be same as the first order filter. But rather if you see the cutoff frequency of the second order filter, it will be somewhat get shifted. So the cutoff frequency of this second order filter, let's say omega 2c will be equal to omega into under root 2 to the power 1 by 2 minus 1. So suppose if you are cascading the and such first order low pass filters, then the cutoff frequency of that nth order filter will be equal to omega c into under root 2 to the power 1 by n minus 1. So as you can see, the cutoff frequency of that nth order filter will get shifted by this amount. So suppose if you are designing the second order filter of 1 kilohertz, then the cutoff frequency will not be 1 kilohertz, but it will somewhat different. While in case of the Butterworth filter design, if you see the cutoff frequency will be remain the same whether it is a first order filter or it is a higher order any filter. So in this way, as you can see, just by cascading this first order low pass filters, we cannot design this Butterworth filter. Apart from that, 
in the design when all the values are equal that is r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r and c1 is equal to c2 is equal to c then this transfer function will become k into omega c square divided by s square plus 2 divided by rc into s plus omega c square so here this 1 over rc is nothing but a omega c so for this design if you see the value of q at the most will be equal to 0.5 So now this value of Q basically represents the amount of peaking around that corner frequency or a cutoff frequency FC. So as the value of Q increases, you will see the more amount of peaking around that cutoff frequency, and as the value of Q reduces, you will see the higher amount of attenuation at the cutoff frequency. At that time, the filter design is known as the Butterworth filter design because whenever Q is equal to 0.707, then at cutoff frequency. you will see the amplitude will be equal to 1 by root 2 times the maximum value so simply just by cascading the two first order rc low pass filter we cannot design the second order butterworth filter because to design this butterworth filter we require the higher value of q and that is only possible when we have a some sort of positive feedback from the output side and that is only possible when we have a some sort of active component in our circuit so one such filter topology which is quite commonly used for the butterworth filter design is the salenki filter topology so as you can see this topology in this topology we have a positive feedback from the output side or let me redraw this circuit so as you can see here here we have a positive feedback from the output to this capacitor c1 so this is known as the unity gain salenki low pass filter design and suppose if we want a gain then we can connect the feedback resistor between the inverting end and the output side and if you see the transfer function of this salenki filter topology then it can be given by this expression so just by applying the nodal analysis at these nodes we can easily achieve this transfer function so try to get this transfer function by yourself and if you have any difficulty then do let me know in the comment section i will provide the note for this derivation so now suppose if we compare this transfer function with the generalized form of the second order filter that is k into omega c square divided by s square plus omega c into s divided by q plus omega c square then we will have a omega c that is equal to 1 divided by under root r1 r2 into c1 into c2 and the value of q will be equal to under root r1 r2 into c1 into c2 divided by r1 c1 plus r2 c2 plus r1 c1 into 1 minus k so in this way as you can see by choosing the value of this gain and r1 r2 and c1 c2 we can decide the quality factor q of that particular filter or if you want to simplify the design then let us take the case of when r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r and c1 is equal to c2 is equal to c so in such case the transfer function can be given by the expression k into omega c square divided by s square plus s into omega c into 3 minus k plus omega c square where omega c is nothing but 1 over rc so now as you can see here for this design the quality factor q can be given by 1 divided by 3 minus k so when r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r and c1 is equal to c2 is equal to c then the quality factor q only depends upon the value of the gain so just by adjusting the gain of this filter we can get the different values of the q but the main limitation of this design is that you cannot have a gain more than 3 because as the gain approaches the value of 3 then the quality factor q will approach the value of infinity and then the system will become unstable so for this design the value of k will be always less than 3 now we had seen that for the butterworth filter design the value of q should be equal to 0.707 so we can say that 0.707 should be equal to 1 divided by 3 minus k or we can say that 1.414 that is equal to 3 minus k or if we simplify it then we will get k as 1.5 6 now we know that the gain of this filter k will be equal to 1 plus r4 by r3 and the value of k should be equal to 
six. So for the Butterworth filter design, the ratio of R4 by R3 should be equal to 0.586. So let us say if you have a R3 that is equal to 10 kilo ohm, then the value of R4 should be equal to 5.86 kilo ohm for the Butterworth filter design. So in this way, by just changing the value of gain, we can design the Butterworth filter design using this Salen key filter topology. And in this way, just by cascading the multiple such second order filters, we can design the higher order filters. So to design these higher order filters, we generally used to use these polynomials. So let us understand how we have arrived to these polynomials. So in this transfer function, let us say we are designing the low pass filter for the frequency omega is equal to one radian per Second, so this term one over R one C one into R two C two will be become one. So we can write this expression as k d r by s square plus, and we know that the quality factor Q for the Butterworth filter design is point seven not seven. So we can write this expression as k d r by s square plus one point four one four s plus one. So that is the polynomial for the second order Butterworth filter design. For the frequency of one radian per second, so in this way, if we want to design the higher order filters, then just by using these filter polynomials, we can design the higher order filters. So let us try to design the third order Butterworth low pass filter, which is having a transfer function of s plus one into s square plus s plus one. So for that, we need to cascade the second order filter with the first order filter. Or in terms of the filter design, if we say We need to cascade the second order Salen key Butterworth low pass filter with the first order RC low pass filter, and in this design we will use this polynomial that is s plus one into s square plus s plus one. Let us say in this design we want to design the cutoff frequency of this filter as one kilohertz. So instead of having this s is equal to one. Now in the design we will have a cutoff frequency of one kilohertz. So we know that F C is equal to one divided by two pi into R C. So let us assume the value of C that is equal to point one microfarad. So the value of R will be equal to one divided by two pi into F C. So if we put these values, then we will get R as ten to the power four divided by two pi, and that is equal to one point five nine kilo ohm. So in this way, just by choosing the value of R1, R2, and R5 as 1.59 kilo ohm, and value of C1, C2, and C5 as 0.1 microfarad, we have ensured that this filter will have a cutoff frequency of 1 kilohertz. So apart from that, we also need to ensure that the quality factor Q of this filter will be equal to 1. Now to achieve this value of Q is equal to 1 in this filter design. The value of one over three minus k should be equal to one, or to say the value of k will be equal to two. Or in another way, we can say that R four divided by R three plus one should be equal to two, or we can say that R four is equal to R three. So let us assume that the value of R four and R three is ten kilo ohm. So just by using these values, we can ensure that we will have a Third order low pass Butterworth filter, which is having a cutoff frequency of one kilohertz. So in this way, just by using these polynomials, we can design the any order Butterworth low pass filter with our given particular frequency. If you understood so far how to design these Butterworth low pass filters, then you will easily understand that how to design the Butterworth high pass filters. So in this Butterworth high pass filter design, you just need to interchange the Position of this capacitor and the resistor. So as you can see here, we have interchanged the position of this capacitor and the resistor. So this same Salen key topology will act as a second order high pass filter. And if you see the transfer function of this high pass filter, then it will be given by this expression. And in this expression, whenever we put the value of R1 is equal to R2 is equal to R. And C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C. Then the denominator of this transfer function will be identical to that of the low pass filter. So now the transfer function V out by V in will be equal to K into S square divided by S square plus S into omega C into 3 minus K plus omega C square. So this is how the transfer function of the high pass filter can be given. 
So now in this design, the value of Q should be equal to 0.707 for the Butterworth filter design. And for that design, again you will find that the ratio of R4 by R3 should be equal to 0.586. So the procedure which we have followed for the low pass filter design, the same procedure can be followed for this high pass filter design. So just by interchanging the value of this capacitor and the resistor, we can design this Butterworth high pass filters. And in this design, we can use the same polynomials which we had used for the low pass filter design. So suppose if you want to design the third order filter, then just by cascading the second order filter with the first order filter, we can design the third order filter. Likewise, by just cascading the two second order filters, we can design the fourth order Butterworth high pass filter. And for this design, we can use the same polynomials which we had used for the low pass filter design. So as an exercise, try to design the fourth order Butterworth high pass filter, which is having a cutoff frequency FC of 10 kilohertz. And do let me know your design values in the comment section below. So I hope in this video you understood how to design this Butterworth low pass as well as the high pass filter using this silent key filter topology. Similarly, in the upcoming videos, we will see how to design the bezel as well as the Chebyshev filters using this silent key filter topology. So if you have any question or suggestion, do let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.